Hey Brick Fanatics, today we are looking at a set so large that I can't even fit in the shop properly to tell you about it. Let me just move this giant box out of the way. Oh, that's better. Now, let's don our warmest winter coats and head out onto the icy wastelands of Hoth as we take on one of the most requested LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series sets of all time. Prepare yourself to do battle with the intimidating monster that is 75313 LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series 8080. 8080s first romped onto the silver screen during the iconic Battle of Hoth in The Empire Strikes Back. Standing over 20 metres tall and with near impenetrable armour plating, these massive combat vehicles were built as much for their tactical advantage as they were for the psychological effect they brought onto the battlefield, striking fear into any rebel trooper who was unfortunate to encounter one. Over the years, LEGO Star Wars fans have been treated to numerous iterations of the dreaded Imperial Machine. Starting with the minifigure scale 4483 8080 in 2003, to the most recent, a micro fighter that was part of 75298 8080 versus Tauntaun. Each one has brought something different to the battle, but none have ever come quite this close at capturing the sheer monstrous size and intimidating presence that 75313 is offering. Standing at an impressive 62 centimeters tall and containing 6,785 pieces, this is by far the largest LEGO 8080 model to date. And thanks to the Ultimate Collector Series tag, we can expect a high level of authenticity and accuracy, especially when compared to its on-screen counterpart. But can this behemoth live up to the hype and do the Empire's most intimidating land-based vehicle the justice it deserves? As expected, the box itself is huge and gives a good indication of how big the final model will actually be. But more than that, the artwork and overall design of the packaging immediately separates this from your average set. Flipping over the main flap and you're treated to some gorgeous Empire Strikes Back artwork, obviously featuring the Imperial Invasion of Hoth, but also featuring a view of the marching 8080s in the distance as viewed through a doomed Rebel Trooper's electro binoculars. Opening the main box further reveals a set of smaller boxes that contain the four manuals and 6,785 pieces needed to construct this deadly ground assault vehicle. Also included is an e-web blaster and two snow speeder bikes. It's a wonderful way to start what is ultimately an utterly captivating experience. Gigantic, massive, enormous. Get used to these superlatives, because they're going to be used a lot during this review, as quite frankly, it's the only way to describe just how imposing a set this really is. The 8080 was such a striking sight during the Battle of Hoth, and the lumbering, deadly mechanical walkers made for an intimidatingly imposing sight on the horizon. The posability of the legs are an important feature to get right with any recreation of an 8080, but no doubt what's even more important with a model this size is making sure the legs have both posability and strength. Anyone who's built one of the previous LEGO ATA models will know that while the legs are fully posable, they're not exactly the sturdiest of models. So when LEGO announced that they were making a UCS version of the ATAT, the first question that popped into my head was how on earth is this thing going to stand up? In order to solve the problem, the design team developed new arc elements, which are present in all four feet and act as both design details and stabilizers, keeping the mahusive model from toppling over. These arc elements evenly distribute the weight of the model, giving the entire structure a solid foundation. Further to this, the new flip-flop Technic beam attached to each leg adds even more strength and allows the joints to instantly lock into position. The four giant legs are such an important and integral part of the overall design that putting them together takes roughly about half of the entire build experience. It's repetitious, methodical and extremely labour intensive, however 
It's a very rich and rewarding experience and somewhat of an engineering masterclass. The central arcs for each foot use an impressive technique, employing hinged Technic axles that flip the arc elements up to the centre of the foot, connecting to one another at the top of the arc. The inside of each leg contains an intricate Technic assembly made using gears, worm gears and turntables. These are then covered using plates and tiles to add the necessary detailing. The lower legs attach to the feet using a ball and socket joint on the outside and lock into place through the use of the arc elements and Technic gears on the inside. On each leg's middle joint, there's a hidden Technic axle which can be turned using a brick-built wrench, allowing for a small amount of horizontal positioning to be achieved. As a nice touch, the wrench is finished with a printed 2x2 tile with Imperial insignia on top. The first box focuses on the lower section of the 8080's body and the tops of the legs, while the second box concentrates on the four feet and lower leg sections. Incredibly, these all slot together with the use of just eight Technic pins, but instantly feel secure and stable. Connecting these two sections together will, for the first time, give you an idea of just how big the 8080 is actually going to be. Spoiler, it's gigantic. The legs alone are larger than the most recent minifigure scale model, 75288-8080, and amazingly, this gigantic model feels sturdier too. A simple prod of the finger is all that's needed to send the smaller model tumbling to the ground, but a lot more pressure is needed if you want to topple over this guy. That's probably as much as I dare. The interior space of an 8080 is something rarely, if ever, seen on screen, and previous sets have tried to include some inside space, but the limitations of the model size has meant these are usually quite small and cramped. The interior here feels cavernous, with enough space for 40, yes, 40 snow troopers, although only five are included here, thank goodness then for the well-timed January Hoth battle packs. Did somebody say cynical cash-in? Not me. The lower section contains a garage space that can hold up to four speeder bikes. There are storage areas, fuel cells, backpack chargers and more. It really brings the whole set to life and gives you a greater sense of the firepower and imperial might these walkers could bring to a battle. The structure for the interior comes together surprisingly quickly. The angled floor is achieved using hinged bricks that connect to a ball and socket joint. These are then covered over with wedge plates that fit perfectly into place. It's a satisfying, if not somewhat straightforward process. However, the snake-like neck is a lot more inventive, once again mixing Technic and system pieces to great effect. Several iterations were attempted to achieve an assembly that was both as strong, yet with enough flexibility, to match the on-screen machine, and the design team eventually discovered Technic crane arm elements had just enough give to allow the flexibility required, but offered an impressive amount of strength too. The way the wedge plates and tiles seamlessly integrate with the Technic bars look fantastic fantastic, and the Technic crane arm elements allows for a really impressive range of movement. The whole neck assembly is a really smart design, and it's a moment during the build that really sums up what a UCS set should be all about. Large scale, accurate, highly ingenious, and above all else, fun to put together. The cockpit has enough room to comfortably seat the two ATA drivers and General Veer's command post, complete with printed console. The rear hatch is faithful to the film, as is the windshield, complete with controls and a sticker displaying Echo Base's shield generator. And unlike some other Hoth-based UCS sets, the shield generator here actually has four components to it, like the film, instead of three. UCS Assault on Hoth, we are looking at you. The exterior of the cockpit is just as densely packed with detail as the inside. Two rotating side cannons with excellent greebling achieved using angled wedge plates, and the front heavy laser cannons with recoiling action look incredibly accurate. Finally, the roof and the sides are covered by these gigantic sub-assemblies made mainly from plates and wedge plates, and then connected together using clips and bars. There is something quite impressive about building things at this scale. Rather than connect to the model through either a stud connection or clips, these sections simply slot into place, allowing for easy access into the interior. Once finished, the model is quite simply breathtaking in its scale. I mean, this thing is just massive in 
every sense of the word. The feet alone are the same size as the recent Microfighter, and it absolutely dwarfs all previous 8080s. To give you an idea just how big this is, picture a medium-sized dog and you'd be pretty close. It really does an amazing job of transporting you to the Battle of Hoth, and for the first time in LEGO form, you can really appreciate just how imposing, impressive and mighty this Imperial Beast actually must have been on the battlefield. No wonder it was the Empire's ground assault vehicle of choice for so many years. The 8080 is such an icon of the Battle of Hoth that really the only minifigures that could possibly come with the set are those that are seen on the ice planet. Past 8080s have featured a combination of ATA drivers, snowtroopers, General Veers, and Luke Skywalker in his snow speeder fatigues. And true to form, this set also includes these characters, with nine in total. We've seen the 8080 drivers and Luke in previous sets, and while the four snowtroopers all use existing printing, it's what's under their hoods that's interesting. Interesting. The LEGO Group has been very vocal this year about offering more diversity spread throughout their themes, and these snowtroopers are a perfect example of seeing that promise in action. There are two black troopers, one male, one female, two white troopers, one male, one female, and making up the ATA drivers are again one male and one female. Leading these troops is the first of two exclusive minifigures, a Snowtrooper Commander. The other exclusive minifigure is General Veers, dressed in his battle gear that was also included within 75288-8080, but for the first time he comes with dual moulded legs and looks excellent for it. We've seen variations on these figures before, and although something new would have been brilliant, in fairness to LEGO there aren't many more characters that would make sense being included. With that in mind, it's a decent quantity of minifigures at least, and given how spacious the interior is, they're needed to make the giant 8080 feel like the proper armoured transport vehicle it is. Ever since the first Ultimate Collector Series set was released in 2000, fans have come to expect high quality, authentic and accurate models on a massive scale. Aimed at an older market, these sets are hugely desirable, but ones that often come with a price point at the most expensive end of the scale. 75313 is no different, but is it worth it? Well, if you live in Europe or North America, then absolutely yes. But the UK has once again got the raw end of the deal. In fairness, it feels like this is something out of the LEGO Group's control, and unfortunately, UK residents are just going to have to get used to higher prices. Now, obviously, not everybody's going to be able to enjoy this set due to the price, but if you can afford it, or even better, you have friends or family who are feeling particularly generous, then you're not going to feel shortchanged by the experience at all. 75313 Ultimate Collector's Series Imperial All-Terrain Armoured Transport is an absolute beast of a set. The build experience takes you on a wonderful journey of LEGO design at its very best. The fact the designers managed to find a way to have this colossal monster stand on its own four feet without the aid of any supports at all should be commended. And the fact there's only eight Technic pins connecting the leg sections together is more akin to magic than high-end engineering. Constructing the cavernous interior is a joy and a real marvel to behold. The level of detail across the entire model is phenomenal, so much so you'll have to keep pinching yourself to check you haven't actually been transported to Hoth. The sheer scale of the final model is bound to leave most people speechless, and it makes for an absolutely dominating display piece, if you're lucky to have a shelf big enough. The 8080 has been the most requested vehicle to be transformed into a UCS set, and while it has been a long time coming, I can assure you the wait has definitely been worth it. And there you have it! Please support the work that Brick Fanatics does, like bringing you this review, by purchasing your copy of 75313 UCS 8080 using our affiliate links below. Even better, for all your LEGO news, reviews and more, head on over to BrickFanatics.com and if you never ever want to miss anything LEGO related ever again, then sign up to our newsletter. And for now, I'll see you later.